you were professional or businessman, do you desire to earn a dominant euros or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making a product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Pivot to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business to be ordered at a physically same discount call 080-912-44449. I'm here today again to talk about this book, Build to Go Global. The book Build to Go Global is a very important book for all entrepreneurs and aspiring business people, particularly those who are going for retirement that would like to do entrepreneurship or produce products that they would like to sell in the national market. So today I'm coming to talk to you on the 30 reasons why you need a group built to go global as an entrepreneur. If you are looking for a market to sell your product abroad, then you will love this book, Build to Go Global. You will find it difficult to get buyers abroad, then you will love this book, Build to Go Global. <laughs> if you like a book full of stories about, to drive on the point rather, of the message that is being passed across in the book, then you will like this book, Build to Go Global, because the book is full of stories and case studies. If you are looking for why many business people drop out of export business, then you will love this book. Then you will love this book. If you want to build a successful business in export, then you will love this book. If you want to build a sustainable export business, then you will love this book. If you want to know if you are ready, for the export market, because the challenge of readiness is a big deal in export business, then you will love this book. If you want to know if you are ready, that's examining yourself to know if your business and yourself is ready for export market, then you will love this book. What are you still waiting for? Grab your copy now. Avoid dropping out of export business, then you love you need to get a copy of this book. If you are looking for how to get a partner abroad to support your export business, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you are looking for export market with high demand for your product, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want to know the challenges of doing business abroad and how to avoid them, then you will love this book. If you are looking for a template to follow to minimize your error rate in export business, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to know your customers, we call them CW of customers in the export market, how to know your customers or consumers in the export market, then you will love this book. If you are looking for how to boost your capacity to meet export market demand, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you are looking for how to mitigate payment risk, then you need to get a copy of this book. That's payment risk in export business. Then you get a copy of this book. If you want to know why business owners, the promoters, fail in export business, then you need to get a copy of this book. If you want your product to be found in big stores like Tesco, like Tilbury, like Walmart, in markets around the world, then you will love this book. What are you still waiting for? Grab your copy now.
Are you an account officer, relationship manager, or marketer in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you at the verge of losing your job for no performance? You desire a change for the better in your career. Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professionals from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to solve import export trade customers' problems and consequently attract the deposit and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. All right, thank you very much for joining. Uh, we'll be taking off this evening with uh, exploring export potential of Nigerian state and we'll look at Abia. This will continue for the next 36 weeks. And um, we will remind ourselves of some of the things that are peculiar to our country each week. And that's talking about uh, why export is important and more importantly also what we see in each of the states of Nigeria. And I said last week that maybe this is happening at this time when elections are around the corner, maybe this will help us in some of the conversation we are having and the kind of question we should be having. I'm asking rather. Um, asking the politician who want to contest to be able to ensure that they actually are able to um, come in this time around and do what Nigeria wants, which is creating jobs and increasing the income of each of the state. If you have yet to get the book due to go global, you can drop your detail in the chat and my colleague will reach out to you. Also, if you are joining us for the first time and you would like to have access to the video of both the previous edition and the one of today, kindly visit that um, YouTube channel, Voice of African Trade. Voice of African Trade House, all the videos we have done on AFCFT and many more videos that might be of interest to you, giving you skill and competence to be able to export in a successful and sustainable manner. If you also want to get the link to this program every week, you will get it on Telegram. You will get it on Telegram. I will also drop the link to the Telegram channel shortly. If you visit that link on the Telegram channel, you will be able, if you click, if you visit that Telegram channel every Thursday, you will get to see the link. And if you click on the link, you will be able to know exactly how to join us every week on this program. I've just dropped the Telegram channel on the chat. You can check it out. So you'll be able to know when to join us and how to join us the next time. Now, we are starting with Abia State today. We are starting with Abia State today. And we'll be exploring this state a very interesting journey for me because then we get to see the potential that each of the states in Nigeria have. And I will start from the first, Abia. And in another 36 months, I mean, 36 weeks from now, or 35 weeks from now, we'll be rounding up. That'll be sometimes early next year, we'll be rounding up with Zamfara State. We'll go on a short break. When we come back, we we'll start. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Views to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To pre order a 50% discount, call 
0809124449. All right. So every week I'll be talking about seven things. I'll look at the preamble, basically encouraging the need for the state in question to export. I'm making us to see the potential of this state and export in general. I'll talk about the peculiarities of the state. And this has to do with the local government location. Just summary of the state in general. Then I'll go to profile. The profile is actually talking about the depth of the state. How much is the state owing? Level of unemployment. The issues in the state that is worthy of concern to us. Then I will talk about the potential. The potential basically talk about what are the exportable products from this state. And, the put, and then I will look at the purchasers of those products. Who are those buying? Which country buy? Then I'll make a proposal, proposal to the state on what I think they can do. And lastly, I'll talk about profit. Profit basically is talking about what we've done is to do a model, pretty much an analysis of the state, taking a product in the state, and based on the data available, looking at the cost of farming, cost of processing, cost of export, and then bringing in the dollar based on a level of land in the state being used, maybe 25% or 30% or 50% of the available arable land in the state being used to cultivate. And the idea is to paint a picture of how the state can generate income itself and of course create job within the state. I'm hoping this will be an interesting journey for all of us in this um, room today. So if you have friends that are from Abia State, please share the link with them. Tell them to join us as we explore this state, Abia. This is the, what do they call this now? Like the logo of the state. Um, this state is called God's own state. And it is Abia state. Abia have a couple of local governments, Ukwa West, Ukwa East, Ugu, Ugu Nabo. I hope I pronounce it very well. Aba South, Aba North, Otisioma Ungwa, Obi Ungwa. Isiala Ungwa South, Isiala Ungwa North, uh, Arochuku, Bende, Umaya, that's the capital. Umaya North, Umaya South, or Hafia. These are the local government in Abia State. Let's explore this state, Abia. Now, before we start, again, why does Abia need to export? to avoid over-dependence on the federal allocation, to boost the GDP of Abia State, to create opportunity for the youth in Abia State, to decrease dependence of the business in Abia State on domestic market. A lot is happening in Abia State, I must say, with the garment people, with the leather people, a lot is happening in Abia State. What they've not had is a leader that will be able to really help them to go global with those products. And export proceed and grow revenue of the state. Farming. Export will make farming and rural life become more lucrative in Abia State. It will help Abia State to gain global market share and recognition. It will make Abia State home of creativity and innovation. Home of creativity and innovation. It will make export can make can it can become an industrialization catalyst for Abia State. It's a source of job creation for Abia State, and I will show you soon. It will make the Abians to know the value, the competitive advantage of their state. It will help to lead the state to lead the way for others to follow. It will make the state to become independent of federal government. Export has numerous incentives for exporters in the state to enjoy. It is the opportunity for the government of this state to maximize the indigenes abroad. Export will make it to maximize the potential of your indigenes abroad. 
It can help to eradicate poverty from Abia state. Exports can help the state to quit the league of states depending on wasting assets like oil through federal allocation. It can revive the Abia state economy. It can slow down rural urban migration in Abia, particularly to Abba. I've been to Abba before, and um, I mean, what I saw sincerely was an I saw because of the road. Not peculiar to Abia. I mean, but the population also was huge, very huge, rural urban migration. I feel the state government can do a lot, lot, lot more. There are transcript free incentive for the state, that for exporters in the state and Nigeria in general. Export will make those people producing in the state, those people in the garment industry, fashion, those people in the, not just garment or fashion, but now also in leather works to utilize their idle capacity, to utilize their idle capacity. The viability of the state are boosted through export. The viability of the state are boosted through export. Wealth creation also for the citizen of the state. Wealth creation for the citizen of the state through export. Export can help so we can extract the potential of product found in this state because of the demand of export. Yen for more improvement because of competition, the state can improve on its production capacity and the state can zero in on its strength. It can zero in on its strength and begin to generate a lot of income and create a lot of employment by virtue of exportation. So I'm asking the Abians today, what do you see in Abia state? What do you see in Abia State? Do you see unemployment in Abia State? And I'm not denying unemployment in Abia State, but I think it's good we begin to see the opportunity available in Abia State. What do you see in Abia State? Do you see the frustration, sorry, the uh, poverty in Abia State? Of course there are poverty everywhere in Nigeria, but you can choose to look beyond that. What do you see in Abia State? How about the frustration in Abia State? You know, the beauty we have of us as human is we can choose what we want to see. That's the beauty we have as human. We can choose what we want to see. We can choose what we want to see. We can choose what we want to see. You can choose to see the challenges. You can choose to see the opportunities in the state. You can choose to see the opportunity or see the challenges in the state. You can see this opportunity in farming. You can see this opportunity in farming. You can see this opportunity in mining. And you can see the opportunity in the population of Abia State. We'll go on a short break when we come back. We we'll begin to discuss other vital information this time around, peculiarity of Abia State. Are you an account officer, relationship manager, or marketer in a bank? Are you struggling to meet your income and deposit targets? Are you at the verge of losing your job without performance? Do you desire a change for the better in your career? Then register for the Certified Global Trade Management Professional from the American Institute of Extended Studies to acquire skills needed to solve import export trade customers' problems and consequently attract the deposits and income of the transaction to your bank. Registration is currently ongoing. Call this number to register today. All right, let's look at the peculiarity of Abia State. Abia State is one of the 36 states in Nigeria and has about 70 local government area. Out of the 774 local government area that constitute or make up the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Abia State was created the 27th of August in the year 1991 during the government of General Ibrahim Babangida. The state is located in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Abia State has created was created out of the old Imo state and the two sister states share boundaries. 
Abia State known as one of the constituent states of Niger Delta region. The state has its capital in Humaya. Why the capital city, the commercial city rather is Aba. Abia State is also referred to as Godun State. And the name Abia is an abbreviation of four Abia State densely populated region. What are the region? Aba, Bende, Isu, Isiu, Kwato, and Afiko. <laughs> this state, they could not find a name. They have to use an acronym. <laughs> so how come Umaya got the capital? It must have been politics. So apparently, Umaya is not among the state the part of the state that is well populated. But whom I have got the capital. Abia State is an Igbo speaking state found under the Igbo ethnic group. The Igbo people, who are one of the indigenous people of southern east, southern Nigeria, make up 95% of the population in that area. Sajina language is Igbo and it's widespread use, in use rather. English is also widely spoken and served as official language. In governance and business, Abia State is over 2.4 million people, and they are mainly Christian. The state is bounded by Anambra, Enugu, Eboin, to the east, Eboin, to the north, Imo, to the west, Cross River, and Aqua Ibon to the east, and River State to the south. The commercial hub, Aba was formerly known as British Colonial formerly known a British colonial government outpost in the region. Its unique competitive advantage is largely in shoes and garment factory. Those are the two advantages of this state. Shoes, leather works, and garment factory. Shoes and garment factory. Total land area, 4,000. 900 kilometer, capital is Maya. We have seen also that it has 17 local government. Population at the time of this was about 3.9. Vegetation, tropical, rainforest and savanna. Major crop, cocoa, rice, plantain, maize, cocoa yam. Oil palm, cassava, cashew, rubber, and plantain. Solid minerals, kaolin, gypsum, kaolin, gypsum, sorry, kaolin, iron ore, kaolin, limestone, gypsum. And there are three agricultural zones in Abia State. There's one in Aba, one in Umaya and one in Bende. Opportunity for investment in this state include agri, auto component, light manufacturing, healthcare, tourism, energy, and mining, according to the um, NIPC, Nigeria Investment Promotion Council. Now, agriculture is the major occupation of the people of Abia State. This is included, this is induced by rich oil, which stretch from north to south part of the state. Subsistence so farming is prevalent, and about 70% of the population is engaged in it. Now, you will not see why this state have an advantage. The fact that some, some, some percent of the population are in agri. A few farmers also produce on large scale. Farming in the state is determined by seasonal distribution of rainfall. This is so unfortunate in Nigeria. How can we be, you know, some countries don't have luxury of the land we have, as in the fertile land that we have. Yet they are still able to farm in their land. They are in the desert, like Israel. We have, are waiting for rain to be able to farm. Some farmers use irrigation method. The main crop grown are yam. Cassava, rice, cocoa, maize, 
why the cash crop include oil palm, rubber, cocoa, banana, and various type of fruit. And we will see the size of the market of this product later on. Modern poultry has been introduced and is practiced by a good number of people, hence, there is adequate supply of egg and other poultry products in the state. The Golden Chicken Project at Kugwe in Kukwaga government area is a modernized a modern mechanized poultry farm. The three agricultural zones, like I said earlier, Bende, Abia, Ahumaya, and, Aba, and Aba. In Aba and Umaya, agricultural zones such as cash crop, as farm produce, cocoa and rubber are produced. Why the one? Why food crop such as yam, cassava, rice, plantain, banana, maize, cocoa yam are also produced in large quantity. Now, let's look at this state more closely. Let's look at this state more closely. Look at this state more closely. You will notice something that young people in the state be under the age of 14 is about 35%. Working population is about 60%. Old people is about 5%. Labor force is about 2 million people. Labor force is about 2 million people. Check the IGR of this state. As I said, 19, this state generates 14.8 billion. What was the budget in 2020? 137. No, just imagine that. Just imagine that. Just imagine that. Where will the other or the remaining come from? Of course, it's going to come from borrowing. It's going to come from Abuja, reliance of Abuja. But this is a state that has investment opportunity in oil palm, in aquaculture, in rubber, in cassava, in livestock, in cocoa, in cashew, in crop production, in industrial park, in rice. What is the competitive strategy of advantage of this state? <clears throat> it's bothered by seven states, access to market. Seven states, like deposit of iron ore, a developed shoe and garment factory. I know the state is trying to export those things and they've made some effort. But like I've said on this program last week, we will be limited in how much we will be able to do if every effort of government will be limited. If the government does not first of all get the people ready for export, you invest, they start, but they are unable to continue. Why? They were not ready for export business. Labor force statistics: working age, two point four million. Not in labor force 770, labor force 1.6. 1.6. Unemployment rate 50%. Unemployment rate 50%. Out of the labor force of 1.6, only about 818,000 people are working, doing something. But you know what? They also have 15 underemployed. When you add underemployed to unemployed, 65% of the population of this state do not really have a job. Do not really have a job. Someone that is living there is confirming this. Do not really have a job. So unfortunate. So unfortunate. Let's go to the profile of this state. We'll go on a short break. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn a dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? Do you deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global? Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled to go global. 
is scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. So we order a 50% discount call 080 Profile. Remember, we checked the IGR the other time. We are looking at the IGR more closely now. The, IG, the highest IGR of this state is 15.9 Now it's down to 14.38. Depth of this state, $89 billion in Naira. Foreign debt, domestic debt, $89 billion. Foreign debt, $96 million. $96 million. If you use um, uh, the exchange rate and check this $96 million multiplied by $96 million multiplied by 415, that's $39 billion Naira. This state is owing about Um, almost 140, or oh, yes, almost 140 billion naira. Almost 140 billion naira. Almost 140 billion naira. Look at the federal allocation. The total federal allocation received in 2020 is 55 billion. But when you see the budget, Sometimes that's why, of course, there was always a budget deficit anyway, because the budget that our people always put in place is far, far higher than what they are earning can carry. Let's move on. The structure of the state. Look at the state. 21% of the state earning is IGR. This state cannot survive without Abuja. That is the challenge of many Nigerian states. 55%. Sorry, 79%, almost 80% is from federal allocation. Just imagine that. <laughs> the state is spending a lot on capital expenditure, 41, and recurrent expenditure or operating expense, 58%. This state, the IGR per capita is 3,000 naira. IGR per capita is 3,000 Naira. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting when you look at the way many states in our country are. According to the budget report of Nigerian states, the God-owned state Abia emerged 15 position, up 10 places from its 25th position in 2020. This improvement was driven likely by cut to the state operating expenses. Abia recorded the smallest shock, declining by 2.66% 2, 2 from 14 to 14.77 to 14.37 in 2020 because of COVID-19. Abia still may find itself sliding down the slippery back hole of debt if it does not do more to improve the size and resilience of its internally generated revenue capacity through harnessing more of the state economic potential and source of revenue. This state depends a lot on the federal allocation. A lot on federal allocation. In 2020, the total state, the state total available revenue is 91 billion. And this was quite distant from total expenditure of one around five. With its recurring revenue, being 69 billion up from 67 billion. Now, let's look a little bit more about the potential of this state. Look at the minerals available in the state. Crude oil. Crude oil. Natural gas. Tar sand. 
pass and lead and zinc, phosphate, gypsum, limestone, iron ore, kaolin, industrial sand, igneous rock, laterite. A number of these minerals have a very huge opportunity in the export market. A huge opportunity in the export market. Let's look at that grade. Agriculture is the major occupation of the people. Like we said earlier, 70% engage in it. The main crop grown are yam, cassava, rice, cocoa yam, maize. The cash crop, oil palm, rubber, cocoa, banana. And the state produce a lot of cash crops. Bende zone is a major producer of rice and yam. Fishing is also carried out by people who live in the along the Imo River. Large area of the forest can be found in all the local government area. In his policy of Abia State in his policy, in the policy of the Abia State government to encourage development of industrial activity in the state, large state industrial. Establishment located in Abia include Nigerian Biri, Golden Biri, uh, Guinea Biri. In Umaya, we have Aba Textile Mill, International Gas Industry. Several medium scale industries abound in the state, which produce items like plastic wares. How much of export of this is being explored? Plastic wares. Textile, food processing, machine tool fabrication. Aba is not only the major commercial center of the state, but also one of the commercial nerve center of the eastern state. Commercial nerve center of the eastern state. Remember the main crop, cocoa, rice, plantain, maize, cocoa yam, oil palm, cassava, cashew, rubber, and plantain. Solid minerals, iron ore, kaolin, limestone and gypsum. Now, we'll go on a short break when we come back, we're going to be discussing the purchaser and the size of the market of this product. Are you a professional or a businessman? Okay. Do you have any dollars, euros or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? You deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global. Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Views to Go Global. It's scientifically proven, tested, and trusted templates for building a successful and sustainable export business. To so order a physically same discount called so now when you look at those products I've shown you, let's now check the purchaser of this product. Number one, the purchasers of this product, number one, and the market. The size of the market, the size of the market. This state can produce a lot of palm oil. Guess the market size of palm oil in the world. 29.3, not million dollars, so billion dollars. The state can take a stake in this. And my recommendation is for the state to begin to export. And I will show you what I mean by that soon as I round off each state every week. This state produce palm oil. Palm oil market is 29.3 billion. 29.3 billion. In Africa alone, we have about 4.28 billion. In Africa alone, 4.28 billion. In Africa alone. The next one is banana. The state produce a lot of banana. Do you have an idea of the market of banana in the world? Just check it out. Just check it out. Just check it out. Banana in the world. 
14.2 billion. Fourteen point two billion. Fourteen point two billion. How about African market? Two hundred and twenty nine million dollars. Two hundred and twenty nine million dollars. Even in African market. Even in the local African market. Continental market. Let's move on to the next one. This country produced leather. Look, look, look. This state produced leather. The size of leather in the world is $55 billion. Who are those buying? Europeans are the major buyer of leather footwear. Germany, Italy, France, Belgium, Spain, United Kingdom, Poland. US is controlling almost 20% of that market in terms of demand. Then you have a few in Asia, 55 billion. But if you look within Africa, there's market of almost 800 million or 708, uh, almost $800 million, $797 million. In Africa alone, from South Africa to South Sudan, um, to, Sudan to, uh, to Cameroon, to Algeria, to Morocco, to Angola, to Kenya, to Libya, to Djibouti, to Tunisia. Another product this state produces Clothing, like T-shirt. You want to guess the market size of T-shirt in the world? $46.1 billion. $46.1 billion. That is the market size of T-shirt in the world. $46.1 billion. That is the market size of T-shirt in the world. $46.1. And majority are buying from Europe, Germany, Spain, Italy, United Kingdom, France, Belgium, Poland. And then United States taking 16% of that market. Gloria said, farmers and entrepreneurs in Abia say lack knowledge that will make them export ready. That was the reason I wrote the book, Build to Go Global. The book, Build to Go Global, is actually condensing in about 120 pages information required for anyone who wants to export from anywhere in the world in a successful and sustainable manner. The information is condensed together for anyone who wants to export in a successful and sustainable manner. Build to go global. So that problem has been solved is to get the information across to them that is a challenge. Imports, I mean, importers of neat shirt. See Asia, European, America. Asian, European, and America. Glory, you can chat me privately on the chat, or you call the number I'm dropping for you now. Those that want to get the book, I just drop a number for you. 9 Four 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 nine. I just dropped a number for you. If you call that number, you can reach my colleague and get a copy. Let's move on. So in Africa, one billion. In the world, for the six point one. But in Africa, one billion. The market for shares. We are talking about ABA. This state also produce rubber footwear. Thirty six billion rubber footwear. Thirty six billion. Majority of the importers are in where. <laughs> in Europe, then Asia and America, Africa, 2.8 out of about 236 billion market size. Now, here is my proposal, and I do have a proposal for government of Nigerian state. Here's my proposal. If we are going to grow SMEs in Nigeria, if you're going to create a job in Nigeria, we must empower SMEs. If in the agricultural value chain, let's look at palm oil in this state, and I will use palm oil for many states in the Southwest, Southeast rather, because that's a common product that a number of them can produce. If an SME is the one producing, is the SME is the one harvesting and transporting, SME is the one doing primary processing and storage, SME is the one doing secondary processing, and SME is the one doing 
marketing, sales, and logistics and export. We have an inefficient value chain operator, low processing capacity and low output. We are going to have few job creation. We're going to have low quality and packaging. We're going to have high cost of production because they don't have capacity to achieve economy of scale. And we're going to have non-competitive product in the export market. But look at this model. Imagine we allow the SME to farm, create job, to harvest. But we have a large corporate who is doing the primary processing and storage and also doing secondary processing. But they are doing it on contract basis. They're not doing it for themselves to export themselves, no. There are SMEs that buy for them. So they produce for SME two. So for example, SME one, we go to SME two, we go to SME one, buy raw materials, give it to, a, to large corporate. This large corporate, we process the raw material for SME two, also help to print the packaging material for SME two. It will process and package in the name of SME two. SME two then do the marketing and sales logistics and export. Do you know what will happen? We we'll have an efficient value chain operator. We have high processing capacity and high output, good quality and packaging, low cost of production, competitive product in the export market, increased job creation by the way, and increase, decrease inequality and decrease insecurity. Because job will be created. Decrease inequality and decrease insecurity. You know, whenever SME are the one producing, we cannot grow the volume of production of that product. When SME are the one processing and producing, I mean processing rather, SME can produce on a large scale, creating a lot of jobs, using mechanized farming supported by government. But to process, I think a bigger company can process, but process for different people who are going to sell to different markets. Who are going to sell to different markets. Enough to export, to support exporter in your state to enter export market in Africa and Europe and America. In a secure and sustainable manner, the state government can do the following. The state government can partner The state government can partner with representatives at destination to market and secure the contract. The state government can set up a warehouse for pickup by wholesaler and retailer at destination. The state government can set up an entity who will be an agent or distributor for their SME at the destination market. The state government can partner with independent agent or distributor at the destination market. The state government can organize and sponsor their manufacturers to exhibit their product abroad. To exhibit their product abroad. To go for exhibition of the product produced in the state in the export market. What am I saying in essence? I'm saying in essence that state government can partner with a, a special purpose vehicle a private entity, state government provide fund, while the entity provide expertise. State government form farmers into cooperative in the state. The state government issue purchase order, the, stuff up, uh, the private entity purchase order to the farmer backed by a guarantee from the government. This private entity, that is partnering with the government, provide training on input and support to farmers. This private entity provide collection center for the harvest. This private entity clean and process the product for export. This private entity source for buyers, do documentation and shipment. This private entity present document to the buyer's bank for payment. And this private entity pay the farmers upon receipt of fund and share the balance with the state government in a ratio that the state government has agreed. Remember the state government is one creating the environment, creating the guarantee, 
and help him with all that is needed to get the job done. The state can use its share for its own development. The impact of the suggested model for the state government goes beyond employment generation, go beyond the generation of revenue via export. It has humongous impact on employment generation and increased economic activity in the state. This, in my opinion, is a more effective and efficient and enduring model for diversifying the economy of any state in Nigeria. This model can also be replicated by federal government at the federal level, especially for the exportation of solid minerals. Before we close, I'll be showing you something and it's a profitability analysis. Are you a professional or a businessman? Do you desire to earn a dollars, euros, or pounds? Have you thought of taking your business to the world? Does it look like a daunting tax? Do you deserve to know what you need to do to get ready to go global? Do you know that there is a science behind making your product or service to go global in a successful and sustainable manner? To learn more about it, get a copy of the book titled Views to Go Global. A scientifically proven, tested, and trusted template for building a successful and sustainable export business. To be ordered at a physically same discount, call 080-912-44449. All right. Now look at the model we develop for profitability of this thing. Let's assume Abia want to export palm oil using the model we just talked about. Using the model we just talked about. The land mass of the state is 242,688 hectares of land. In the state, the arable land, the arable land, 242,688 hectares. If the state use half of this to cultivate palm, palm front or palm fruit, Based on agronomists in Nigeria, the yield per hectare is 18 metric tons. 18 metric tons times half of the arable land in, in that state. That's 121344 hectares of land times 18 metric tons. Possible yield, 2.1 million metric ton of palm oil, of palm, palm fruit. If you process palm fruit, the yield is actually about 19%. That means we're going to have 414,000 metric tons of palm oil from the 2.1 million metric tons of palm fruit. According to agronomy, the unit cost of processing per metric ton is 30,000. That means cost of processing will be about 12.45 billion. Cost of farming is 6,000 per metric ton, according to agronomists. And this comes to about 2.49 billion. Cost of export is about 40,000 per metric tons. And this brings the total cost of farming, processing, and export to 16.6 .6 billion naira. So the total cost, cost, total cost of this project, cost of trans, cost of export, cost of processing, cost of farming is about 31.54 billion. Now, unit cost of palm oil, $500 per metric tons. $500. Times the total quantity of palm oil, 414. That's 207 million dollars. If you convert 207 million dollars, exchange rate, former exchange rate, oh, former exchange rate, this state can generate 74 billion naira. 74 billion naira. 74 billion naira. What is the IGR of the state? 14 billion. 14 billion, 14 billion. This state can generate additional 57.99 billion just from Pamela alone. And these are just rough estimates. 
of what is possible in each of the states of this country. And our recommendation is, is high time Nigerian state government begin to look inward at the possibility of partnering with private entity to cultivate agro products in their state with the intention of getting those products into the export market. We have looked at Abia today, and next week, we are going to be going north, and we're going to be discussing Adamawa. As I conclude, I would like to say to everyone that if you want to have our economy, if you want to create more trade in Africa, if you want to grow our GDP, if you want to create employment and boost our foreign reserve, if you want to increase the wealth and reduce poverty, aggressive drive for export is the way to go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for being able to join today. See you next week as we explore more of Nigerian state. And this time around, we'll be moving on to Adamawa State. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful weekend. Bye for now.